Saturday morning cartoons, Batman animated series, The Goat. Let's do this. Robin's Reckoning, a two-parter that gives us some of the Robin that we really want. Because at this point, we really haven't had a lot of Robin, right? We had him in some previous episodes uh, dealing with his own fear and anxiety against Scarecrow. We had him dealing with uh, helping out Batman overcome the Riddler and the Minotaur's maze. And that, that episode was great. And we've seen him a couple times to even help give a Batsy a nice Christmas in one of the Joker episodes, but really haven't had a lot of Robin. He's kind of taken a back seat. And this episode is designed to really give Robin the backstory that he needs and deserves. And it really kind of takes us through some of those different threads that are very, very important to the lore. And you have sort of a little intro that kind of sets up a name drop with this criminal, like give us a name, give us a name. And they've got people cornered and they finally give out the name. And it turns out it's Tony Zuka. So Bats goes out by himself, tell Robin to basically stay home. It's like, why? And Alfred kind of drops the name. It's like, oh man. So he's doing the uh, name search from Billy Marin, his different aliases. And of course the aliases come up and we end up with the big twist. The big twist is, um, that it's one of the people that is tied to the death of the Graysons. Okay. So in the flashback, we have the Robin story that ties very much into what they did with Batman forever. It's loosely tied to some of the comic books, but remember during the comic book era, this is an era where we had a lot of uncertainty. Dick Grayson's growing up. We had Jason Todd. We didn't like Jason Todd went through crisis. He was kind of rebooted a little bit. Everybody voted to kill him off. He was by Joker. Then we got Tim Drake. So we needed some defined framework of what Robin would be like in the Batman universe. So I think they did a great job here of trying to incorporate that and giving us the backstory that we wanted that tied to the theatrical stuff. And of course, um, it's very tragic, of course, and sad um, as Bruce shows up. Then, of course, he goes to the he go, he ends up at the uh, the mansion and you, and you end up at this sort of like back and forth. Uh, with Batman investigating, tracking him down. And then, of course, the realization of uh, Dick dealing with the reality of, of uh, the tragedy that befell him, uh, of his parents. Now, part two. What we see with Dick is the anger, the frustration, right? Tying back to uh, the childhood, him being difficult, challenges and the flashbacks. We see him... Um, He's just going to do it. He's going to go out on his own and they have a flashback of the lessons with Bruce. And what is important here is you start to understand a morality and a connection between the two. It's very important in my opinion. That's why this is probably one of the biggest criticisms I would have of Batman 89 was they made the uh, Bruce's parents were killed by the Joker, uh, Jack Napier. And in fact, it was just Joe cool. It's just some random guy. And it's the same thing with what Dick Grosser is just some random guy, some random thug guy. It's not a supervillain. I think it's interesting because if it's a supervillain, it becomes a vendetta for Batman. It becomes a vendetta for Bruce Wayne, not just him being the crime fighter. Whereas the, the battle in overcoming the vendetta is done against the regular criminal. I think it was important to see a very similar origin for Robin because it creates even a stronger bond between the two of them of how they can relate. They have a very similar mission. It's all very aligned then. You know, had it been one of the supervillains, then it becomes a different kind of thing because then you become irrational, uneven, and likely can't make the, the appropriate decision that you need to make. Flashback to Dick trying to do a crime solve on his own, being a hero. He's practicing, he's learning, different kinds of things like that. Of course, Batman is there and ultimately has to save him at one point. And, you know, this is when we end up, we end up seeing um, the big reveal from Batman to Bruce Wayne, which is just tremendous. It's just, it's just a great moment. And I, I think it's just, it was done very, very well. And we cut that back to with Dick, he's on the motorcycle and he's there tracking him down. They get the jump on bats. Bats has a, a fall and injury. He's a little slowed down. And of course, this is where Robin comes into play and it's up to Robin to make the right decisions. And I think that uh, Batman even has a deeper messaging here because as the audience, you're like, it just seems very linear. It's whatever. And that's not the show. The show is so much deeper than that. 
because Batman has a comment here about, I didn't ask you to stay home because I was afraid of what you would do to Tony Zuka. I was afraid of losing you too. Pretty heavy stuff. Pretty good stuff, especially for kids. Great show. It's the goat. This is why it's the goat. So many layers, universe building, uh, character building, um, building a bond between the two of them. They're going to be so much tighter. They're going to, you're going to, you're going to believe so much more about their uh, bond and how much they care about one another. Now, after these episodes, it's, it's just, it's really, really great. So if you haven't seen Robin's reckoning, it's one I could have, it's a two part of that. I would definitely check out. Cause I think it does really, really does a great job. Again, spreading the, the lore and the mythology for the Batman story so much uh, in, in so many different ways. So thank you for your time. Thanks for hanging out with me on Saturday morning. We'll have more next time. Appreciate you so much. I am Pops. Now the Power Rangers are going from the box office to the box. New Power Rangers Jell-O with a Power Rangers movie trading card inside. Only from Jell-O where the power is on. Scooby-Doo, weekday mornings at 5.30 on TV 58. Because this cartoon is over. No, not now. Stay tuned after this break and see if we can rescue John. Boy, I hope this is a two-parter. Now two can play the games of the Super NES Super Scope. Yoshi Safari and Metal Combat Falcon's Revenge. So to prepare yourself, you might want to consider some basic training exercises.